Last night, Kamala Harris had a big town hall and she revealed her plans on abortion, You know, with all these draconian laws uh, passing in multiple states around the country. What does she plan to do? She breaks it down. Are we gonna go back to the days of back alley abortions? Women died before we had Roe v. Wade in place. And so I'm gonna tell you, on this issue, I'm kinda done. Because here's how I feel about it, guys. these laws and so and when elected I'm going to put in place and require that states that have a history of passing legislation that is designed to to prevent or or limit a woman's access to reproductive health care that those laws have to come before my department of justice for a review and approval and until we determine that they are constitutional they will not take effect so that is very interesting because obviously that was the case when it came to civil rights legislation protecting the right of uh, of access to voting in a number of states that had little interest in it for the entirety of the time that the US <laughs> has been a country. Um, applying that to another issue is not something that I've generally heard about. And uh, we know that as with voting rights on abortion, we, have, we are engaged in a multi-generational battle over this. It's an interesting concept. I don't know that it would actually make it through this particular Supreme Court, but well, you yeah, give her credit since, for creativity. Yeah, so it's based, as you mentioned, a little bit in like you know the Voting Rights uh, Act and things that would that would cause that would force states to actually follow the law, and it's based in that whole thing, which of course this Supreme Court, um, since the new Chief Justice came and decided to go ahead and scrap that and say, oh, it's you know there's no more racism in the country. Let's just stop doing that whole thing. So the fact that it's based in that is a part of the hurdle, but. I don't see anything wrong with uh, giving it a try, mm -hmm. why not? And then because honestly, who cares if you don't think racism doesn't exist anymore, it's obvious. But also what's obvious even more in this particular case is opponents of women's reproductive health care. Which by the way, I like that term a lot better because that's what it is. Mm -hmm. When you encompass it all and say, oh yeah, we're totally pro-life, you're actually stopping access women have to the reproductive health. Yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, like their counterpoint will be like, no, it's it's abortion specifically we're against. Yeah, but if you're not championing people, women's access and funding for other aspects of the reproductive rights, it makes sense to generalize at that point. So uh, again, I don't know if this would actually, if this has a chance of actually becoming law, and let alone standing up to Supreme Court scrutiny. But on this area, I think that we do need champions, and so I'm glad that she's taking it up as a cause that she can differentiate herself from some of the other candidates. Thank you very much for watching this clip from the damage report. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell on YouTube to get notifications of our new videos. And of course, you can catch the full damage report live every weekday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on TYT Network on YouTube TV.